Hey, Kung Fu Conversations crew. It's your friendly Kung Fu bus driver here in Boulder, Randall Davis. So this is going to be a special solo cast today as I start the warriorship conversing conversations that I came up with. So for those of you that don't have YouTube or Instagram, let me go ahead and introduce what this whole little series is about. I actually love all martial arts. I don't study all martial arts. I just don't have enough lifetime to do it. But I love all martial arts, and I love listening to multiple martial arts podcasts. One of them that I'm very fond of is the Musho Shugio podcast. My friend Dean Suter out of New Zealand has this podcast. You should absolutely take the time to check it out. One of the episodes that intrigued me was the ancient warrior versus the modern athlete. And there was a lot of things that I agreed with Dean on. And there are a few that I didn't, but hey. That's what a podcast is. It's opinions. And it was very insightful and very well done. But it posed a question in my head. Well, what is the difference between the ancient warrior and the modern warrior? What are some similarities? What are differences? And what is a warrior? What is this whole concept? So I reached out to multiple podcasts, and a lot of them agreed to cover the same topic on their own shows. The first show that started us off, and a big thank you, goes to Colonel Todd Halsey. Colonel Todd Halsey's podcast, the Dirt Wasp podcast, was one of my new favorite podcasts over the course of the year. And although he had hung up the show to focus on the family, I talked him into coming out of retirement. And so the last episode of the Dirt Wasp podcast starts off the whole series of warriorship conversing. So if you'll follow that hashtag, Warriorship Conversing, the other shows will, over the course of the next year, maybe even two, will add their take on to it. So I'm going to start with one of my takes on Warriorship. I loved Colonel Halsey's episode. I agreed with 99.9% .9 of what he said. Today, I am going to talk about two modern athletes that I feel convey the warrior spirit and they cover two things with the warrior spirit that I think a true warrior, whether you be from military background or service, or whether you be your average Joe and Jane, whatever your job and whatever your background is, to have that warrior spirit, these are two things that I think you have to have. And that is the ability to overcome obstacles and internal drive. And I think that these two modern athletes display that maybe better than I've seen in a long time. I'm talking about Matt Stutzman and Bebe Vio. So each of them are world-class Olympians. One of them is in a sport that has been recorded to be 70,000 years old, not on the sporting scale, but that of archery. The bow and arrow 70,000 years ago can be traced back to Africa. That is a long time, my friends. And the sword, Bebe being a fencer, has been around for 3,300 years before Christ. Matt Stutzman has won three silver medal, and this year, his first gold in the 2022 World Para Archery Championships. Bebe has won nine gold medals, two silver and one bronze. Both of them are world-class Olympians. And both of them have no arms. Let's give a little background on Matt Stutzman. Matt was born without arms. He was adopted into a family of seven farmers here in America. And... The family decided, well, he is one of ours, and he's one of us, and we are not going to treat him any different. So he's going to have to help out with the chores on the farm, absolutely everything. His brothers and his father were hunters. He learned how to shoot a rifle with his legs and his feet, and was actually able to hit pennies at a distance because of his aiming skill. He didn't think that there was anything different about that than a normal able-bodied person with arms and hands. He thought that this was something that everyone can do.
Later on, he learned archery and wound up hunting with a bow and arrow. At one point, uh, his bow was stolen out of his truck. His dad couldn't afford to replace it, so that kind of went to the wayside. Later on, Matt was living on Social Security. You know, he, he couldn't really find a job. So he married his sweetheart. They had three kids. They were going hungry, and he talked her into buying a bow and arrow and skipping rent for the month. And sure enough, he went hunting with dad and uncle, or excuse me, dad and brothers. And he got a couple deer, and then he started getting sponsorships. Eventually, one of his friends told him that, Matt, you are pretty good, but you're not great. And the only reason that you're getting sponsorships is because you don't have arms. And it is unique and special. And so Matt thought, okay, that's a challenge. Somebody threw down the gauntlet. And he decided to be the best archer in the world. Not disabled archer. Not archer without arms. But archer in the world. And so he went to practicing eight hours a day. And eventually started winning contests with money against able-bodied people. Let's talk a little bit about Bebe. Bebe Vio is an Italian fencer in her late 20s now. I think she's 26. Bebe started fencing when she was five years old. At 11 years old, she contracted meningitis. She wound up losing her arms at the elbows her legs at the knees, and that wound up being her choice. The doctors gave her a choice. We can try to keep your legs and it could kill you, or you can lose the legs at the knees and you'll live. And she chose to live. Her body is scarred with the meningitis scars. She needed something to keep her going. She had the internal drive. She told her father, I want to get back into fencing. And he said, well, you know, fencing is with the three fingers and you need the wrist. And, and you know, he just, he kept listing all these things and he saw the, the fire in her, the passion in her eyes, that warrior spirit. And he smiled and he said, okay, we're going to figure out how to do this. Watching Bebe fence, just like watching Matt shoot a bow and arrow is a feat of amazement. You know, Matt, he'll walk out, he'll have the bow and arrow slung over his shoulder, and he'll walk up to this small stool, and he'll sit on the stool, and someone will hand him an arrow to his mouth, and he'll put it in the bow and arrow, and he'll reach out, almost like some kind of reverse plank or a sit-up, one foot holding the bow, shoulder pulling back, taking aim, firing, and hitting the target. It is absolutely stunning to watch. Just as stunning as it is to watch Bebe fence. We strap her in the wheelchair. We put this arm attachment on. She almost becomes a superhero, if you will, with a sword attached to it, strapped to her arm. She has the full fencing place faceplate and body gear. And she fences. And she's world class. And she has the skill and the strategy and the speed. There is a whole team that supports these these two individuals. They are not the lone wolf. A lone wolf is an oddity. It's not real. We need people to take care of us and help us in our goals and our strategies. And a whole team helps these two remarkable individuals. But because that team helps them, that is part of their internal drive, is not only to win for themselves, but to win for their brothers, sisters, mothers, family. In the case of Matt, his children, his wife. That is part of their internal drive. That is why they go out there to compete now, Matt could have just taken his bow and arrow contracts, I think he's with Hoyt, and just lived off that money. 
But when his friend laid down the gauntlet to him and said, hey, you're good, but you're not great. Well, that stoked a fire in Matt. And he said, maybe, you know what? Maybe I'm not great, but I will be. And so that is his internal drive, is to be great, to be a world-class fencer. Or excuse me, archer. Bebe is our world-class fencer, right? She has that drive. She has that tenacity. She has that fire. Both of them are great examples of overcoming obstacles. Matt was born without arms and learned to adapt. Bebe was born with both her arms and legs. She had to learn how to adapt when these things were taken away from her. What keeps them going? There have been so many obstacles thrown at these two world-class athletes. And yet they get up every day and they practice their profession. They overcome obstacles every day that some of us will never be able to understand. And not only are they overcoming obstacles, but they are some of the world's best in their respective fields. I think a lot of us think of warriors, especially a lot of us that do martial arts and think of ancient samurai or kung fu monks flying on clouds doing backflips. Maybe you think of modern warriors, you know, you have an idea of someone that might be like Schwarzenegger from the Commando movies or Stallone from Rambo. Navy SEALs. Maybe you think of a native war chief on the plains. All of these are absolutely valid. But I think that there are warriors in many fields that maybe we haven't been introduced to that have the warrior spirit, that are a part of a warrior's culture. These are two modern athletes that I wanted to introduce to everyone. Let me spell their names out for you. Matt Stutzman. Matt with two T's. Stutzman is S-T-U-T-Z-M-A-N. And Beatrice Vio. That goes by Bebe Vio. B-E-B-E. And then Vio is V-I-O. V-I-V-O. I can't spell. That's my English degree. V-I-O. <laughs> I think these are two world-class athletes, as well as warriors. They display the spirit of overcoming obstacles. They have internal drive that makes them great competitors, world-class athletes. This is my first introduction to warriorship conversing. I will be doing two more of these, and also one with Owen at some point. I hope this message finds you well and inspires you. Take a look at these two world-class athletes and warriors. You can find them anywhere on YouTube. Great stories, great documentaries. Matt Stutzman and Bebe Vio displaying the warrior spirit of overcoming the obstacle and internal drive. I hope this message finds you well, my friends.